Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionals, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today, we'll talk about coronavirus. It's not just one virus, they are a group of viruses. So, a more accurate word is called coronaviridae, which is a group of viruses. We'll talk about it, and we'll talk briefly about the new coronavirus, which is discovered in Wuhan, China. And let's get started. First, we divide microbes into bacteria, fungi, viruses, and parasites. Today's topic, the corona is a freaking virus. Viruses. A virus is not exactly a living organism. It's actually kind of in between. It's kind of living and non-living. Some people consider it as at the edge of life. Why do you consider it as a non-living thing? Because it lacks a cellular structure. Okay, why is it similar to living things? Because it can replicate very quickly indeed. That's why we call it go viral. Everybody wants to go viral, nobody wants to go bacterial. We first discovered those pathogens in about 1892 or so. That's less than 150 years ago, which, historically speaking, is nothing. It doesn't even show up. Viruses infect your cells, and then they use your own cells as a, quote, DNA-making machine. DNA or RNA, of course. So, they infect your cell. And the term bacteriophage, some people say, oh, it's a bacteria. No, 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 it's a virus that infects bacteria. Phage means it's gonna engulf, it's gonna eat, it's gonna infect a bacteria. You know, there is a famous drug called glucophage. Glucophage is metformin. Why do we call it phage? Because it's kind of eating the glucose. It's decreasing the level of glucose in the blood. It makes your cell eat glucose. Defending your body against viruses is the responsibility of your glorious lymphocytes. We divide viruses into DNA viruses and RNA viruses. Coronavirus or viruses are RNA viruses. If you want a lame mnemonic, corona has an R and RNA has an R. DNA viruses and RNA viruses. It's a topic that drives medical students nuts. So go to Help Hippo. That's a YouTube channel. It's great, by the way. This guy has a brilliant song to help you remember the DNA and the RNA virus, and this is from this channel. So, DNA viruses are Pox, Herpes, Hepadena, Parf, Papoli, Adena. The second line, no envelope, so therefore the first line has an envelope. These are the seven DNA viruses. RNA viruses are 15, Toga, Flavia, Retro, Corona, Delta, Arena, Bunia, and Philo, Rabdo, Orthomexo, Paramexo, Picorna, Khaleesi, Hepe, and Rio. The last line, non-enveloped, all of these are enveloped. These non-enveloped viruses are also known as naked viruses, which is slightly inappropriate for a medical lecture. Okay, let's make our discussion relevant to the current events. The Zika virus is a freaking flavivirus, which is RNA. Ebola is phylo, again RNA. Corona includes common colds, viruses, SARS, which is severe acute respiratory syndrome, MERS, which is Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, I'm from Egypt, so it, it, it hits deep. It's hitting home with me. And the late 2019 coronavirus discovered in Wuhan, N4 Novel. Novel, which is because it's new, Novel in French. Corona viridae. Viridae is the plural of virus. It's an RNA virus, as you know. Here is the RNA. Positive sense. Yeah, in fact, all of the RNA viruses are positive except the red ones. So, except uh, for these seven. So, Delta is negative, Arena negative, Bunia negative, and Philo is negative, Rhabdo is negative, Orthomix is negative, Paramix is negative. All of the others are positive sense RNA viruses. It's a single-stranded RNA virus, and it's linear. So, all of them are linear, except those three are circular. And here is a circle, just to remember. How about the capsid of the virus? It's helical, as opposed to what? As opposed to icosahedral. How about, does it have an envelope? Yes, it's an enveloped virus. As opposed to what? As opposed to naked. I've told you all of these have an envelope, but these, no envelope. Some of you people think that coronaviruses have been discovered 23 days ago. Not true. They are as ancient as the 1960s. The last one has been discovered 23 days ago. 2019 novel coronavirus, also known as Wuhan virus. So here are the coronaviruses. 
229E and OC43 in the 1960s, and we have SARS, COV is for coronavirus, H for human, coronavirus, NL63, and then HK, Hong Kong, and H is also for human, U1 in 2005, MERS, which is the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome in 2012, and the later Wuhan virus just 23 days ago in December 2019, New Year's Eve. The first two doofuses cause common cold. SARS is the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. This is famous. And this one causes bronchiolitis. The Hong Kong one causes a respiratory disease. MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. Again, a respiratory disease. It's also known as the camel flu. 2019, this is the Wuhan coronavirus. Have you noticed all of them cause respiratory diseases? So how can we prevent them? Like wear a mask wash your hands, do not get in contact with patients, it's just common sense. Prevention is better than cure, especially when there is no cure. Okay, let's talk about the Wuhan coronavirus. This is brand new. This is literally 23 days ago. So we do not know a lot about this virus and I'm recording this on January 23rd, 2020. Anything can change in the next few days, weeks or years. So please forgive me for any mistakes here. This is just as far as I know. Wuhan coronavirus is the same thing as novel coronavirus is the same thing as Wuhan coronavirus is the same thing as Wuhan seafood market pneumonia virus because we do not know what to call it. It's also that 2019 NCOV for coronavirus. All of these are synonyms. Okay, give me a word that's a synonym to synonym. Okay, that's a good question for you to answer in the comment section. First cases of the Wuhan coronavirus were reported on December 31st, 2019. The initial source is still unknown. Some people argue it's the seafood in one of the markets, but it's doubted because other people who had no contact whatsoever with that market developed the coronavirus. Snakes are probable reservoir, but still we do not know. Human to human transmission is possible. Until January 22nd, 2019, it's not considered as a PHEIC by the World Health Organization. What the flip is PHEIC? A public health emergency of international concern. So in other words, it's considered an emergency in China, but not worldwide yet. Look, folks, newspapers love hysteria epidemics, outbreaks, all of this because they get to sell more newspapers and they get you to click more on their articles. So, but just to put things into perspective, the number of deaths from various causes from 29th of December to the 23rd of January, not 29th, it's actually like, let's say 31st or something. It doesn't matter that much. From heart disease, more than 1 million people died from heart disease. How about car accidents? 90 thousand. HIV, 49,000. Influenza virus, 38,000. The Wuhan coronavirus, 25 until this moment. But you will never hear about this tomorrow when you read the newspaper because it does not sell enough papers. You will hear about the Wuhan coronavirus and how the world is coming to an end and humanity as we know it is toast. But as of this moment, you're way, 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 way more likely to die from heart disease than from any coronavirus. But if you watch the news 24-7, this will increase your stress levels, which is correlated with heart disease. You are not helping anybody. And please remember Ebola. Remember when people were angry at former President Obama? They said, hey, President Obama, you should do something. You should ban all flights. Ban all flights? Okay, it's true that Jeffrey and his buddies are going to the beach in an airplane. It's also true that little Carol is going to see her grandma. But it's also true that there is a neurosurgeon who is flying to save about three to four kids' lives. There is also a psychiatrist who is going to talk to some patients who are suicidal. When you ban all flights, you might do more harm than good. But aren't you aware, Medicosis, that China has closed down some transport? Yeah, I know it happened in some cities, not the entire country. First, we do not know yet. It might be a good idea. It might be a bad idea. It might be a good idea for China, but a bad idea for another country. I don't know. I'm not an expert on these issues. 
so please take my words with a grain of salt. If you have any symptoms, please talk to your doctor. And as I say, one disclaimer a day keeps the lawyer at bay. Here is a great quote from the genius Dr. Thomas Sowell. There are no solutions in life, only trade-offs. Everything will have some desired effects and some side effects. And here are some great words from the insufferable Z Dog MD. I'm kidding, he's a great person. While Ebola is bad, let's not forget the score. C. diff, staph, and flu already kill way more. So instead of Ebola, you can say, while Corona is bad, let's not forget the score. C. diff, staph, and flu already kill way more. Okay, Medicosis, so what's your prediction about the Wuhan virus? It's difficult to make predictions, especially about the future. Let's see what happened when some people made some smart predictions. I will take even money that England will not exist in the year 2000. Um, we are in 2020 and right now people in England are watching this video. He is a professor at Stanford, which tells you something. He is also the author of the famous book, The Population Bomb, which has lots of false predictions. Here is another wrong prediction by another Paul. By 2005 or so, it will be clear that the Internet's impact on the economy has been no greater than the fax machines. <laughs> but he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics, which tells you something. Okay, you're not funny, Medicosis. Please tell us what can we do. You take control of that which you can control. If someone came to me and asked, give me just one health advice that will have the greatest impact on the average person, the answer is wash your hands. So here is what you can do according to the World Health Organization. Wash your hands, cover your mouth while coughing or sneezing because it's disgusting. Stop it, people. Avoid close contact with patients. Seek medical care if you have noticed any symptoms. Avoid direct contact with live animals. Avoid consumption of raw or undercooked animal products. I know that the rare steaks looks pink and amazing, but it's not safe, man. Also, please remember that risk equal hazard times probability. And while this coronavirus seems relatively hazardous, with a case fatality rate of about 3 to 4 percent, the probability of you developing this infection is extremely rare until this moment. In the next video, we will continue our rheumatology playlist. We'll talk about management of rheumatoid arthritis. We shall discuss the small molecule inhibitors, such as the famous tufacitinib. Who named these things? Speaking of pharmacology, until the end of January, you can get a 60% discount towards my antibiotics lectures. Go to my medicosisperfectionalist.com website. Use the promo code antibiotic60. You will love it. And this is Linda, by the way. She's a nun and she represents Glinda Meissen. And this is the red man in the van down by the river, representing the red man syndrome, which happens with Van Co. Meissen. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can follow me on all of these platforms and LinkedIn and TikTok. And you can support the channel on Patreon or PayPal. Here is my email. Here is my website. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense. I wish you the best of luck.